All right, everyone, welcome to Cody's lab. So today I'll be doing some experiments with electricity, most of which have been done in the 1800s, but are still quite fascinating even today. Let's start with a voltage pile, a, a series of metal plates which, uh, when submerged in electrolyte, produce an electric current. Let's try running a strong current through a wire next to a compass and see what happens. You can see that the compass jumps when I turn the wire on. Just like that. Since electricity moved the compass, which is basically a small magnet, what happens if we put a larger magnet next to a wire and then run electricity through it? Will the wire move? And it sure does. See that? <laughs> yep, the magnet causes the wire to jump right off of it. Let's put the uh, magnet on its side and the wire like this. The wire jumps upwards. Let's try switching the current's direction. Okay, direction of wire switched. Now it appears to be pushed down by the magnet. We've discovered that a wire with electricity affects a magnet, and vice versa. And that the direction that the force is applied seems to be at a right angle to the direction that the magnetism is coming out. And that uh, direction that the force is applied is switched depending on which direction the current is flowing. Some interesting stuff we're learning here. Let's go ahead and try wrapping a wire around something so it's constantly at a right angle and see if we can generate a magnetic field. And sure enough, when we get a coil of wire, we can make a magnet. See that? Since an electric current going through a coil made a magnet, then what would happen if we put a magnet next to a metal coil? Would that create electricity? Let's find out. Let's push that in there. And check out our multimeter. Basically nothing. I guess that makes sense since that would violate conservation of energy. So let's go ahead and push the magnet out. Oh, hold on. The multimeter changed. But only when the magnet's moving. Okay, so a moving magnet creates electricity. How about that? Now that we've discovered that a moving magnet can create electricity, could electricity and a magnet create motion? So if you'll remember, when we had the magnet and the wire, the wire jumped sideways relative to the magnet. So if we dangled the wire near a magnet so it could freely rotate, the magnet should push on it constantly as the electricity goes through it. But we need a way to make a contact that is movable. And that is where the mercury comes in. Now I've poured mercury around the magnet. I've got this wire into the side of the mercury here, and this wire again can freely rotate. Now let's hook up the electric current and see if anything happens. It moved. Whoa, okay, it's spraying mercury everywhere. That's not good. Glad I'm in here. <laughs> I think what we've got is a little bit too much current. Let me add a resistor. Another important lesson, the more wire you have, the more resistance you have, and the less current that'll flow. So just by adding another couple of coils of wire here, I was able to reduce the current to the point where the thing is actually not spraying mercury everywhere. And what we have here is an example of the world's first electric motor. Michael Faraday built this apparatus back in 1821. And isn't it cool? We're able to generate motion from electricity. <laughs> that Faraday motor is pretty neat, isn't it? It was the first time that motion was able to be generated with an electric current. Uh, modern motors actually use a coil of wire that they turn into a magnet. Actually, several coils of wire and a metal armature that gets turned into a magnet and it gets attracted to another pair of magnets, so it turns, but just as soon as it gets to the point where it's going to stop again, 
the current switches and changes the polarity of the magnet and causes it to flip again. So it continues the current that way. But uh, this uh, Faraday motor is actually a little more complicated as to how it works. It's a simpler design, you know, there's not as many moving parts and stuff, but uh, to understand how it works is a little harder. So the current's going down, magnetic field's coming out, and the, uh, you know, in physics class they'll tell you to use the right hand rule, and it'll tell you the direction that the uh, wire gets pushed. And uh, the reason mathematically is because when you multiply two vectors together in three space, you end up with something that's offset 90 degrees from the direction the force was applied. This is uh, a little hard to wrap your head around, but it's actually pretty similar to the way that uh, gyroscopes work. Okay, so here's my crude gyroscope. You can see that if it's not spinning, I can go ahead and push it, and it'll turn the direction that I push. You know, which makes sense, you know. Classical objects do this. Uh, one magnet attracts another magnet. But if you get it spinning, it is spinning real fast. Okay, let's do this kind of like this. Try to get a good view of this. Get this thing spinning, and you push on it the same way I did. Look at that. It turns the other way. It turns 90 degrees offset. I push here, it turns here. That's why helicopters, when they turn, they actually operate 90 degrees out of phase from the blades, because otherwise they just go sideways rather than forward. See that? Now the reason why it gets shifted like that when I push here and it turns over like this, the reason is, is because you're applying the force here, the thing's rotating, the maximum displacement is going to happen over here. It's kind of like if you're playing a Kerbal Space Program, you got a spaceship orbiting the planet. Let's get that set up here. If you uh, fire your thrusters, you know, fire the rockets up and uh, push your spacecraft down, Spacecraft doesn't just automatically flip its orbit like this. It begins moving downwards. But its maximum displacement is where you've got the maximum amount of time that's elapsed since it's been moving, which is on the other side of the planet. And then it comes back up, of course, uh, the gravity causes it to switch direction and brings it back up when you get over here. But it's essentially the same thing going on. The rotation causes the force to be put out of phase about 90 degrees. Now, electrons, and protons for that matter, are basically like little magnets. Now, if you think about it, there is no negative or positive force. There's only four fundamental forces in the universe. There's no fundamental negative electron charge force. There's no nothing like that. It's basically a little magnet that's spinning. When an electron moves, it's actually the wave nature of matter that we're looking at there. When an electron moves, it's actually doing this. It's spinning in three dimensions. So as it travels, it's doing this. A stationary electron will just be attracted to something, but when it's moving, it actually is like a little wave function that gives you a little spiral. <laughs> and to be able to see that in a, such a simple experiment really blows my mind. Um, I can uh, do a little experiment where I actually take a bar magnet, get it spinning, and bring another magnet in towards it, and you'll see that the bar magnet, rather than being attracted or repelled to the magnet, I mean, it is a little bit because my experiment's not very good, but the bar magnet actually gets twisted up like that. Or, if I flip the magnet around, it gets twisted down. That's because the force is being offset by the rotation of the magnet. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.